On today's Daz Studio tutorial, I'm going to show you one way of setting up a uh, lighting setup for a daytime scene. Uh, so there are multiple ways of doing this, I'm just going to show you one pretty quick method of doing that. If you're new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button and maybe the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. I do Daz tutorials about three times a week. So be sure to check back often to see all my new content. Also, be sure to check the description below where I've listed um, all of the relevant products that I'm using in this video, and you'll also find some ways that you can support me either for free or monetarily. With that said, let's go ahead and get into the video. Like I said, this is just one way of doing a daytime scene. So I'm using an HDRI uh, dome right now, and I'll link to the one that I'm using in the description below. And the character that I'm using is Teen Jane 8. I've already got her dressed, posed, all of her textures in place just how I like them. And that's all that I've done. All of the lighting in here is default. I haven't even made a camera yet, so I'm going to do all of that now. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a camera. I'm not going to name it because I'm just going to use one. And I'm going to go ahead and position that where I want it. So I've already got my figure pretty well in place. And specifically, I've got the sun coming down from the right. Uh, because I'm going to use a variation on a three-point lighting setup. So be sure to check out my video on three-point lighting if you haven't already, and that'll give you the basics on that kind of setup. But basically, I'm using the uh, default sun or the sun dome as a uh, fill light, and then I'm just going to use a key light and a backlight. Um, so let me go ahead and get my camera in place. I'm going to have her more or less centered in the frame. I'm just going to position it to where her eyes are looking at the camera. There we go. And then you can still see the shadow there. That's direction that the, the direction that the sun is coming in. And that, again, is going to be my fill light. So let me go ahead and get my key light and my backlight in place. So I'm going to set up a spotlight. And we're going to call that one key. And that's going to be our key light. And then I'm going to set up another one to use for a backlight. There we go, and then I'm going to go ahead and get my lights in place. And um, I did a, this as a test scene a few minutes ago, but I didn't write down any of my values. So I'm just going to kind of tweak things and just do it by feel as we go along. Kind of show you my method to how I uh, figure out my lighting setups in the first place. Yeah, if I can find the left side, there we go. So I'm going to place this light um, off to the left of my camera. And it's going to be kind of pointing down at my model. There we go. And that's just going to light this uh, side of her body that's in the shadow. All right, let me go back to my camera. And I'm going to go ahead and select my key light. And I'm going to start, uh, actually, let me go ahead and set my um, parameters first. I'm going to change that to disk geometry and set my height and width at 55 each. There we go, make sure two-sided is off and render emitter is also off. And then I'm just gonna start bumping up my lumens little by little until that shadow disappears. There we go, just until that shadow starts to go away, but we don't wanna make it super bright. There we go, I like that. And I said we're gonna use that one as a key light, and I actually think that one's gonna be more of a fill. So we're gonna use the sun for our main light. I normally do my key light on the left. Um, there's no rule about that, that's just the way that I prefer to do it. But I think I'm actually going to use that one as the fill light. That's going to be my weaker of my two lights. So you can still see just a little bit of a subtle shadow there. And then the main intensity uh, is coming from the uh, from the sunlight on our right. Um, all right. So I've got that set at uh, 227,906. Let's just go ahead and make that an even 28,000. There we go, just to keep the numbers nice and round. And one more thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bump the temperature down, which is going to shift that light a little bit more into the yellow-orange spectrum. Let's bump that down to 5,000. And I'm also going to change my light color, bump that up a little bit into the yellowish-orange. And that's going to give more of a sunlight-like glow. Um, we're going to shoot for kind of, a, kind of a little bit of an early sunset look with this. There we go. That looks pretty nice. And the next thing I'm going to do is set up my backlight. So let's get that one in place. 
And this one I'm going to do uh, a little bit more intense than I normally do because I really, really want this sun to create a nice glow around, uh, around her hair and around her skin. So I'm going to put this one close, but I'm going to use a really wide spread angle. Um, there we go. Actually, let me go ahead and fix my parameters on this one. So we're going to do disk geometry. 55 on height and width, two-sided off, rendering meter off, there we go. And I'm going to widen my spread angle. So as I do that, it looks like it's getting further away, but really that's just increasing the angle, kind of like uh, when you use a wide-angle camera lens. It's still the same distance, but you can just see more of the uh, picture in frame. There we go, but I'm still pretty close. It's just a much wider spread. All right, let's go back to my camera. There we go. And I'm going to change my color on that one as well. Bump that a little bit further into the red than my other one, uh, my other camera. And I'm going to bump my temperature down also to 5,000. And I'm just going to start increasing the lumens kind of like I did on my other one until I get the effect that I'm looking for. And what I want is like a glow or a halo around the edge of her body there. And actually, I think I put that a little bit too far to the side. So I'm going to adjust that backlight and put it more over here because I want it. I want the glow to be on her left side. There we go. Let's try that. Okay, I think that'll be better. Let's start bumping up my lumens. I might have to be a little bit more aggressive with the lumens on this one than I was with my other light. There we go. I'm going to change my positioning on that and move it a little bit more towards the hair. Just move it up a little because I really want to accentuate that, you know, brown hair. There we go. That looks better, I think. Yes, I think that'll be nice. And you can already see that glow starting to appear on the hair and on her upper arm there. And I'm going to keep going with that. There we go. I'm going to let that preview render for a moment and we'll check it out and see how it looks. I think that's better already. I think I'm going to adjust the positioning on that just a little bit more. Because again, I want more of that glow on her hair so I can get that just right. There we go, finally starting to get that where I want it. So I've ended up having to put that backlight really, really close to get my desired effect, but I think that's gonna look pretty nice though. There we go, yeah, I'm starting to like that a lot. And just to show you what that's gonna look like without that light, how it just looks kind of flat and boring, I'm gonna turn off the illumination on that backlight and give you a quick preview. So you can see that really helps our model stand apart, gives it that nice sheen, that glow, makes it gives it more of a sunlight effect. All right, and the next thing that I'm gonna do, probably the last thing that I'm gonna do is set my depth of field on my camera. Um, so again, I've got a tutorial on this. If you haven't checked it out, be sure to do that. So I'm gonna rush through this part pretty quickly. Again, I'm going for a pretty extreme effect on this, so I've just barely got her head in the depth of field, which is going to make everything else look uh, out of focus. There we go. I believe that is going to do it. So let me go ahead and hit the render button on that, and we'll check it out in a few minutes and see what it looks like. And here we are with our finished render. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with this one. Uh, the lighting is relatively even. Uh, we got some nice shadows on the face, plus a little bit of the glow from that backlight. It's kind of subtle, but I like that look. It looks really nice. Um, I did have one issue with this one, and you might notice a couple of uh, these little white spots. These are transparent pixels that are called fireflies. And they can turn up in your renders for a variety of different reasons. Um, I may do a video in the future specifically on how to deal with these, but they were actually a little bit pronounced in the first couple of renders that I did. And if I flip back, this was the first render that I did. And you can see that they are a little bit larger and a little bit more obvious. And one of the ways that you can deal with these is by rendering at a higher resolution, which is what I did. This one was uh, shot at 1920 by 1080. 
and I bumped the resolution up to ultra resolution which increases the pixel count four times and uh, when I go back to the other one you'll see if I zoom in there are actually more of these transparent pixels but they're smaller so when you zoom out to a standard a more standard resolution they're a little bit less obvious um, but if I don't have too many of them, like in this one, they're not too bad. Uh, so if I don't have too many of them, I will generally just go in and deal with these in Photoshop by using the spot healing uh, tool. Um, and it's not too bad. You basically just have to click on each one of those. Um, but I tried to fix this one through lighting. It didn't have a lot of luck. Occasionally, I'll have a texture of like a hair or clothing or sometimes even like a, um, a figure texture uh, where I'll just get a lot of these and uh, they're really, really difficult to deal with. This one is not too obvious, so I'm generally okay with that for right now. Like I said, if I were going to use this, I think I'd go into Photoshop and just deal with those um, individual fireflies. But that will do it for this video. Um, again, be sure to like if you got something out of this video. Hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And check the description for some ways that you can support me as well as the uh, products that I used in this video. And that will do us for this time. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.